probably one of the best known process of cellular senescence. And um, just to remind you what, uh, what telomeres are, the telomeres are the ends of chromosomes, and the, the, the function is to protect the chromosome ends from fusion and rearrangement. And uh, over telomeres can uh, lose their functions if they uh, become critically short, and this telomere shortening is something that is happening associated with cell division, unless uh, telomerase activity is present, something that happens, for instance, in, in, in cancer cells. And telomere function can also be lost if uh, any of the uh, proteins of the sheltering is altered. Sheltering is, are the proteins that are bind to the telomeric activity. There is evidence, I think a strong evidence, that telomere uh, dysfunction contributes to aging from a number of human diseases. There are rare uh, human stem cell, stem cell diseases, uh, such as dyskeratosis congenica, some cases of aplastic anemia, and pulmonary fibrosis, which are characterized by mutations in the telomerase components, or more recently, in some of these sheltering components. So basically, these patients have a, an accelerated loss of uh, telomere, an accelerated telomere shortening, and they usually, uh, the cause of death is due to a stem cell dysfunction, mostly the bone marrow. But before these diseases were associated with telomere biology, uh, my group and other groups established the important role of telomere shortening in inducing aging by using a, a mouse model, the telomerase deficient mouse model. More recently, we have actually also shown uh, the impact of progressive telomere shortening on the ability of the stem cells to regenerate tissue. This is just an example of the skin, uh, mouse skin stem cells in the hair bulge, where we perform an assay, which is called uh, a mobilization assay, where the stem cells, which are located in the, in the hair bulge, in the mouse skin, can be activated with a mitogen, TPA, and as in white skin, you would get typically 70-80% uh, mobilization of the stem cells, However, when telomeres are short and there is no telomerase activity, such as in the telomerase knockout mouse, the stem cells cannot mobilize when uh, you put the uh, mitogen, and this is indicating that critically short telomeres infer the ability of the stem cells to regenerate tissues. We have later on shown that this defect can be restored if you restore telomerase activity in these stem cells, or if you remove P53, which is actually um, the protein that is detecting uh, critically short telomeres in the stem cells and preventing that these stem cells contribute to tissue regeneration. So we have proposed a model uh, uh, based on the stem cells and, and telomeres by, by, by which we think it could be one of the, the uh, mechanisms that are contributing to organismal aging. So in young tissues, uh, stem cells will have uh, long enough telomeres and, and this allows uh, tissue regeneration. We have also uh, noticed that uh, telomere shortening occurs when you go from the stem cell niche to the differentiated tissues by using a very powerful technique which we call uh, telomapping. We are able to detect telomere uh, shortening from the stem cell niche to the differentiated tissues. This is one of these telomaps in the case of the mouse skin. In red are the longest telomeres. You can see that they are in the hair bulge where the stem cells are unreached and then you get progressively shorter telomeres in the more differentiated tissues. And this is also, uh, um, we think that this is a, a way also to try to identify adult stem cell niches in the context of the normal architecture of, of tissues, because these would be the areas with the longest telomeres. We uh, assume that during aging, uh, telomeres shorten in the stem cell compartment, and I will show you that in a minute that is true for the mouse. Uh, different mouse stem cell compartments, and this would eventually lead to an ability of the stem cells to regenerate tissue, something that is mediated uh, by P53. So P53 would be a very important protein in preventing that cells, stem cells with dysfunctional telomeres contribute to tissue regeneration. So as I said, uh, an important question for us was to see whether the mouse aging telomeres shorten, and this could be uh, an explanation for mouse aging. As you know, mice have very long telomeres, and everybody assumed that telomere shortening could not be something determinant of mouth aging. However, we have uh, uh, shown recently, in 2008, that if you measure telomere length in young mice, uh, so young mice, middle age, or old mice, we can see that uh, in the first year of life, telomeres are uh, quite well maintained in all the uh, adult stem cell niches that we have looked in the skin, in the brain, as well as in the germline. In the very germline, you can see that the the very long telomeres in the stem cell niches are maintained in all these cases. However, when you compare one year to two year old mice, 
there is a dramatic loss of genomic sequences uh, going from middle age to old man. So this is an indication that telomere shortening may be causative of mouse aging, but I think the strongest evidence com comes from the study of the telomerase knockout itself, uh, because now if you study the longevity, the survival of these different generations of the telomerase knockout, already in the first generation, in the absence of telomerase, you see a decrease both in the median and in the maximum lifespan, which is accelerated, in, anticipated in following generations. So this means that telomerase activity and telomere length is very <coughs> for mouse longevity. So what I told you is that telomeres are maintained more or less in the first year of life of mice, then they are trees, and we wonder whether if we were able to delay this telomere shortening by overexpressing telomeres, we could extend the lifespan of mice. And, and this is already published, so I will go fast, but I wanted to present this data in this, in this meeting. So uh, in the telomerase knockout, there is no telomerase, and there is uh, more premature aging. These mice will also show that are more resistant to cancer. We have developed another mouse model, which is a transgenic for telomerase, in epithelia only. And we noticed that these mice had uh, less aging. For instance, they, were, uh, they did better wound healing, etc. However, they had slightly increased incidence of cancer, and uh, we couldn't actually see an increase in lifespan of these mice because having higher telomerase. So uh, what we reason is that we could uh, uh, increase the numbers in a context of increased cancer resistance, and with that, in collaboration with a group of Manuel Serrano, that had developed a number of um, tragedic mouse model which has increased expression of these three very important tumor suppressors. And uh, the combination of both increased telomerase, which is uh, within uh, the longevity gene, together with increased cancer resistance. Uh, uh, is what uh, actually we saw uh, important effects in, in longevity. These mice have uh, three transgenes, uh, four transgenes, and for simplicity I'm going to call them super M, and this is for public, you can see the, the tail data. I just wanted to make the point that these mice have, uh, have uh, less, less aging, this, for instance, the skin, the subcutaneous fat in the skin, which is a biomarker of uh, aging, you can see that white mice, when they age, they lose this subcutaneous fat uh, layer. However, these mice, they maintain uh, a useful subcutaneous, a uh, useful skin, if you want. This can see just uh, by looking at the mice, it's very apparent. These are two-year-old mice. This is the wild type. You can see uh, uh, loss of hair and, and, um, in the face, and these mice look younger. And um, this is because what we are doing here is that the, we are um, having mice which, when they are born, they are already longer, they have a very longer telomeres, and when they are old, they keep longer telomeres uh, compared to the wild type counterparts. And because they have longer telomeres, they have less of the uh, damage that is produced by, by short telomeres. This damage can be detected by uh, detecting uh, phosphorylation of X to AX or any other DNA damage protein at the telomeres, in the so-called telomere dysfunction induced foci. And we see that these telomere induction induced foci are very, are very much decreased almost to zero in this mice that uh, overexpress telomere. Uh, as a consequence of, of this, we see a, a quite uh, um, spectacular, I would say, impact on longevity, on median longevity. These mice live 40% longer compared to the, to the wild type controls. And also, if you look at the survival at two years of age, 95% are alive compared to 50% of the wild types. And at three years, more than 40% are alive compared to less than 4% of the wild types. So there is a quite uh, dramatic impact of um, this delaying telomere shortening and telomere damage in mouse longevity. Um, uh, these mice eat at libitum, and they have a normal weight, so this is not due to calorie restriction. Or and we also discarded any uh, impact on the IGF uh, pathway. So we have, a, we have already repeated this experiment with a different colony of mice. This is just some preliminary data. We wanted to increase the number of mice to see, to be able to address whether, whether there was also an impact on maximum lifespan. Uh, but this is so far the graph. So the, all the wild type are uh, almost, all of them are dead already. And we, we think uh, we are going to uh, of reproduce the same results. And, and we hope to also to address um, whether there is an impact on maximum lifespan. Okay, so after this first uh, part of work that is already published, I also wanted to, to mention some more recent 
Uh, they talk a lot regarding a uh, 